our next paper, presented by Dr. Orr, is Outcomes of Simultaneous Laparoscopic Cholecystectomy and Ventral Hernia Repair Compared to Laparoscopic Cholecystectomy Alone. Good morning. My name is Nathan Orr. I'm a general surgery resident at the University of Kentucky. And I'd like to thank Sages for the opportunity to present today. I'm going to be talking about the outcomes of simultaneous laparoscopic cholecystectomy and ventral hernia repair compared to laparoscopic cholecystectomy alone. I really have no disclosures or super PACs or anything. Um, background information, there's over 900,000 laparoscopic cholecystectomies performed annually. It's not infrequent to encounter a uh, abdominal wall hernia defect uh, while repairing your, or performing your laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Although these hernias are frequently uh, found and repaired during your cholecystectomy, uh, the outcomes of this combination uh, have not been scrutinized. Our objective was to compare short-term outcomes of simultaneous laparoscopic cholecystectomy and lap ventral hernia repair compared against the outcomes of laparoscopic cholecystectomy alone. We retrospectively queried the ACS NISQIP database uh, for patients undergoing lap coli, lap ventral hernia, and both concurrently from 2005 to 2009, and uh, this was based on CPT code. Univariate analysis and uh, multivariate regression was performed, uh, considering over 15 NISQIP uh, risk factors to adjust for patient risk. The outcomes we analyzed included mortality, uh, wound complications, pulmonary occurrences, uh, sepsis or septic shock, renal insufficiency or failure, uh, deep vein thrombosis or PE, uh, cardiovascular events, and length of stay. This uh, outlines some of our patient characteristics. As you can see, we had 74,019 laparoscopic cholecystectomies. We had 8,818 lap ventral hernias, and in the combined group, we had 357. When you look at the lap coles alone and the lap ventral hernias alone, uh, you can see that there are some inherent differences in this patient population. Uh, first, with our lap coles, we see they have a higher uh, percentage of preoperative SIRS and sepsis, a uh, higher percentage of emergent cases, and a higher percentage of wound class greater than three. I think this corresponds with the spectrum of gallbladder disease that uh, we see from biliary dyskinesia to uh, emphysematous uh, gallbladders. I think uh, this is, however, counterbalanced when you look at the uh, ventral hernia group where they have uh, a higher percentage of ASA class, a higher percentage of patients with diabetes, and a higher percentage of patients with severe COPD. And then uh, additionally, when you look at the operative duration, uh, with our combined groups, we see a duration of 86 minutes compared to our laparoscopic cholecystectomies of 66 minutes and our lap ventral hernias of 92 minutes. Uh, if we use operative time as a surrogate for complexity, I think this uh, can uh, indicate a selection towards less complex hernia repairs when done uh, simultaneously as opposed to uh, when repaired uh, alone. Uh, with regards to uh, our results, with the simultaneous laparoscopic cholecystectomy and ventral hernia repair, we had a, a doubled increase of wound complications from 1.2% to 3.1%. Uh, with the simultaneous uh, procedure, we had a, a a doubled increase of sepsis and septic shock, as well as pulmonary complications from 0.6% to uh, 2%. And then when you consider multivariate analysis to uh, adjust for uh, patient risk factors, again, in the simultaneous group, we see a 2.44 uh, times increased risk of wound complications compared to lap coli alone. Uh, the simultaneous group has a 3.1 uh, times increased risk of sepsis and septic shock compared to lap coli alone, and a uh, 2.76 times increased risk of pulmonary complications compared to lap coli alone. And then finally, um, the combined group uh, showed uh, a 2.13 uh, 
times greater uh, chance of having a, a hospital stay greater than one day. The remaining uh, 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 outcomes showed no statistical uh, significance. Therefore, in conclusion, we say that simultaneous laparoscopic cholecystectomy and lap ventral hernia repair compared to lap coli alone has a higher rate of wound complications, sepsis, uh, pulmonary complications, and length of stay. We recommend that caution should be exercised when considering uh, combining laparoscopic cholecystectomies and ventral hernia repairs. And further prospective studies should be performed to assess short-term and long-term outcomes of combined laparoscopic procedures. Thank you. Questions, please. Uh, Catherine Trotman, UC Davis. Uh, with the CPT, T, CPT codes, were you able to assess whether mesh was used, and did you do a multivariate analysis to determine whether those with mesh had a higher likelihood of the, the infections, and also um, if there was bile spillage, did that seem to make a difference? in your results? I, I, th I appreciate the questions. I think that uh, goes to the heart of one of the limitations of the study that's based on a NISQIP database. Um, as you probably know with the CPT codes, uh, for laparoscopic hernia repair specifically, uh, the CPT code does not distinguish between those done with mesh and those without mesh. So unfortunately in the study, it's impossible for me to uh, delineate which repairs had mesh and which did not. I think um, there is uh, data out there that, uh, for example, Choi uh, and colleagues at, um, at uh, Mount Sinai in 2011 did a study that showed the uh, safety of mesh with uh, clean contaminated ventral hernias compared to clean ventral hernias. And they again sh showed two and a half times increased risk of uh, wound infections with clean contaminated cases with mesh. And um, so I think combining those results with our results, you, again, you, you have to exercise a, a lot of caution when you're putting mesh in, uh, in a clean contaminated case. As far as bile spillage, um, it's again hard to assess in the NISQIP database. Uh, looking at data, it ranges from 16 to 34 percent of the cases, and uh, unfortunately I can't distinguish it in, in our data set, set either. I know you're not going to be able to answer this question, but I've got to ask it anyway. Um, antibiotics. Uh, does your hospital routinely use different antibiotics with a uh, mesh ventral hernia repair than it does with cholecystectomy? I can't imagine you'd be able to ferret that out of this data either. Um, but yeah. we certainly know that those would play a role with wound complications. Yeah, I think uh, with over, you know, 200 institutions in the, in the database, it's hard to ferret that out. Um, in our particular institution, I... Um, th I think the answer is no, that we don't use different antibiotics. Uh, th we cover for superficial wound infections on both of them. Um, we have a question over uh, Twitter. Uh, were you able to, f to tease out what wound complications encompassed as far as mesh infections from uh, superficial skin infections? Um, no, it's based on the database showing uh, superficial wound infections versus deep uh, soft tissue wound infections versus uh, uh, wound disruption. And that's, that's what it uh, uses for, for the database. And that's, uh, that's what we used. One thing that uh, CPT codes do distinguish is whether or not the hernia was incarcerated or strangulated. Do you have any data on that? Um, I, I did not uh, ferret out between the two, we included all of that within the study, so it included uh, ventral incisional umbilicals, epigastrics, spigalian hernias, those that were incarcerated, those that were, uh, that were reducible, and those that were recurrent. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thanks. Thanks.